Hello, and welcome to your cell to cell communication notes. So the uh, enduring understanding that we're working on today is to understand that cells communicate by generating, transmitting, and receiving signals. So the pr first part of your Google Doc is um, just kind of some notes in text, and I wanted to do some annotation. So I'm going to kind of read through this and, and talk about how you're going to make comments. So just kind of to, in general, for cells to function in a biological system, they must communicate with other cells and respond to their external environment. Cell to cell communication is ubiquitous in biological systems from archaea to bacteria to multicellular organisms. So what I did here was I kind of highlighted this and then I clicked over in the comment section. Ubiquitous just means that they're found everywhere. They're found in all biological systems. The basic chemical processes by which cells communicate are shared across evolutionary lines of descent and communication schemes are the products of evolution. So this has been, you know, millennia in the making, these communication systems that we have. Cell to cell communication is a component of higher order biological organization and response. So in multicellular organisms, cell to cell and environment to cell signaling pathways direct complex processes ranging from cell and organ differentiation to whole organism physiological response and behaviors. So again, I kind of just highlighted all this and made a comment. We're just going to call those responses. So cells respond to chemical messages. Certain signal pathways involve direct cell to cell contact, operate over very short distances, and may be determined by the structure of the organism or organelle including the plasmodesmata in plants and receptor to cell recognition protein interaction in the vertebrate immune system. So we kind of looked at plas plasmodesmata yesterday with your analyzing diagrams, and we're going to talk about the immune system in greater detail later in this unit. Now, I want you to pause the video, then go to the cell, uh, cell to cell communication Google form, and only answer the very first question. Don't click next or anything. Just try to answer that question. Try to do it without using the notes. Okay, welcome back to the rest of the annotating. So chemical signals allow cells to communicate without physical contact. The distance between the signal generating cell or cells and the responding cell can be small or large. So what I mean here by the distance between if it's small, that means that the generating cell is near the responding cell. If the distance is large, that means that the generating cells are far, far away from the responding cell. So that would imply uh, hormone signaling, the endocrine system. In this type of signaling pathway, there is often a gradient response and, a, and threshold concentrations are required to trigger the communication pathway. Again, we'll talk more about that. So oftentimes it can't just be one signal. We have to actually build up to it before we can trigger a response. Chemical signaling pathways in cells are determined by one, the properties of the molecules involved, two, the concentration of signal and receptor molecules, and three, the binding affinities or fit between the signal and receptor. These, the signal can be a molecule or a physical environmental factor. At the cellular level, the receptor is a protein with specificity for the signal molecule. This allows the response pathway to be specific and appropriate. So by response pathway, what we're saying is this is what always happens. There's a signal, there's reception of the signal, and then there's a cellular response. To be specific and appropriate, that's where we can use that lock and key specificity analogy. Okay, so it, you know, there's the, the signal is specific to the receptor, or you can say that the receptor is specific to the signal. Only a certain signal will fit that receptor on the plasma membrane. The receptor protein often is the initiation point for a signal cascade that ultimately results in a change, ultimately results in a change in gene expression, protein activity, or physiological state of cell or organism, including cell death, which is also known as apoptosis. And I will explain that more in a bit. Defects in any part of the signal pathway often lead to severe or detrimental conditions such as faulty development, metabolic diseases, cancer, or even death. And I added a frowny face right there. 
Understanding the signaling pathways allows humans to modify and manipulate biological systems and physiology. An understanding of the human endocrine system, for example, allowed the development of birth control methods as well as medicines that control depression, blood pressure, and metabolism. So that's good. So we added a smiley face right there. Other examples include the ability to control or modify ripening in fruit, agricultural production through growth hormones, and biofilm control. Microorganisms such as bacteria, fungi, and protists form biofilms. One common example of a biofilm is dental plaque, a slimy build of bacteria that forms on the surfaces of teeth. Gross. Okay, now you're going to pause the video again, and you're going to answer the second and third questions on the Google form, trying not to use your notes. And let's just double check. So hopefully um, you took a look at the other responses you are able to once you submit your responses to the questions. You can see what other people in the class put. But basically, for cells to function in a biological system, they have to communicate with other cells and respond to their external environment. Chemical signals allow cells to communicate without physical contact. And at the cellular level, the receptor is a protein with specificity for the signal molecule. This allows the response pathway to be specific and appropriate. All right, now on to page two of the doc. This is your notes template. So I've already typed in a bunch of stuff for you, given you some diagrams in there as well. So let's just kind of talk about a few things. So signal transduction pathways are what we talk about with, uh, you have a signal, the signal's received, and then it is changed or transduced into a form the cell can understand and the cell response. And these signals can diffuse locally or travel long distances. So local signaling, you can have an autocrine signal. Of course, auto means self. So this is where a signal diffuses from one part of the cell to another part of the same cell. You can have synaptic signals, which are the um, how the neurotransmitters jump the gap between nerve cells in order to convey that message um, to the uh, nerve cells next in line. You can also have paracrine signals, which uh, signals diffuse from one cell to nearby cells in the biological organism. Long distance signals include endocrine signals, which are hormones that travel anywhere in the bloodstream to reach their target cells. And we'll be doing more, uh, a, a lesson specifically on hormones um, later on this week. Signal transduction pathways. So how are the signals interpreted? Well, first of all, the ligands reach target cells either by diffusion uh, to nearby cells or they can travel through the bloodstream. So the ligand is the signal molecule they will bind to a specific receptor, either on the cell membrane or inside the cell, just like a certain key is specific to a certain lock. So it's all about the specificity. Second, the binding of the ligand and the receptor protein activates the receptor and changes or transduces the signal into a form the cell recognizes. So that's why we always say step two is transduction. Okay, so uh, we got to go through several different molecules in order to finally get to the response. Finally, the signal transduction pathway leads to a cellular response. There's basically three responses. Change in gene expression, which means we're either going to switch a gene off or switch it on. Change in protein activity. We're going to make a protein or we're going to stop making a protein or program cell death. We need these cells to go away. So as I was saying, the receptor can either be in the plasma membrane. So this would be for a, um, a molecule, a, a ligand, a signal molecule that cannot pass through the plasma membrane because um, it's polar or it's too big. So it's going to bind to a receptor protein on the plasma membrane. Now, if this signal molecule is lipid-based, it can slip right through the plasma membrane and bind to an intracellular receptor. These generally carry on to the nucleus and activate gene expression. So the response, think of cellular response as the domino effect. The initial binding of the signal molecule to the receptor protein will then activate a particular molecule in the cell, which then activates another and another and another and another until finally at the end we get a cellular response. This could be 10 steps, this could be 100 steps. 
So when we talk about the phosphorylation or signal cascade, just think about the dominoes falling until you get to the end and there's a cellular response. So signal transduction pathways lead to a multitude of responses. They're either going to happen in the cytoplasm or the nucleus. Now, regardless of the outcome, the, the generic cellular response, if you will, there's four things you have to remember. Number one, pathways are characterized by a signal, a transduction, and a response. Number two, these pathways are highly specific and regulated. Number three, one signal molecule can cause a cascade effect, releasing thousands of molecules in a cell. And number four, these pathways evolved millions of years ago in a common ancestor. So let's process this for a minute. And I know that you're, you know, not in a classroom, but you can still participate in this little processing activity. So I want you to Google random number generator and it should come up and look something like this. But on the max, I want you to change that to four. Then I want you to click the blue generate button. So you're either getting you know, one, two, three, or four. So I want you to take two minutes to memorize the statement that matches your randomly generated number. And then um, if you have other people in your house that you want to perform this for, then that's fine. If not, you can perform it to your pets or to an empty room. No, you can't make a group of four, obviously. But I want you to recite your statement with feeling and dramatic flair to your teammates, whomever that may be. Now, I know you think I'm silly, but silliness creates endorphins and endorphins create memories. And if you can say your statement with feeling and dramatic flair, and you get a little giggle out of it, you're always going to remember it. All right. Thank you for attending my talk, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.